On August 15, 2010, a man's body was found in Buckeye, Arizona. The remains were located in a canal near Miller Road. He was quickly identified to be Luis Victor Mendoza. He had been shot four times. Investigators interviewed a number of witnesses and even identified a potential suspect. But then leads dried up and investigation went cold. Then in July 2020, the Buckeye Police Department's Major Crimes Unit reopened the case. They conducted extensive follow-up interviews with the key witnesses they had identified. All of the witnesses identified Phoenix resident Antonio Padilla as the person who took the life of Luis. Investigators learned that Antonio was released from an Arizona prison earlier in 2020. He served time for a weapons violation and gang activity. In the early hours of July 22, 2020, Phoenix police located Antonio near 19th Avenue and Bell Road. They took him into custody during a traffic stop. At the time of his arrest, he was armed. Buckeye Police Chief Larry Hall said, This is exactly the kind of outcome I expected when forming this team. I have no doubt there will be a resolve to more unsolved cold cases in the near future. Why Antonio took the life of Luis Victor Mendoza is still not known. 67-year-old Mary Lindgren lived in an assisted living facility in Covina, California. On January 19, 1996, Mary's body was found in her bedroom at the Covina Villa retirement home. She had been beaten and assaulted before her life was taken. Detectives interviewed facility workers, residents and anyone else connected with the facility. They were unable to come up with a suspect, however. They processed DNA found at the scene and entered it into the state and federal criminal justice databases, but did not find a match. The case went cold. That was until 2019. It was then that investigators decided to take another look into the case. They sent in the DNA they had to the State Department of Justice. Then, in July of 2020, they heard that a match was found. Using the results, they identified 46-year-old Almonte resident David Adolf Bernal. He was arrested in August of 2020. His bail was set at $2 million. Mary's family members said they are relieved that he was finally caught and they credited the Los Angeles County Sheriff's Department for not letting the case go. We are profoundly grateful that a person who took her life has been identified and arrested. We are haunted by the brutal crime for nearly two and a half decades. We are relieved to know that justice will finally be served. It was not disclosed if Mary knew David or if she was a victim of a random attack. In 1969, 24-year-old Mary Scott lived in San Diego, California. She used to live in Louisiana with her husband and two daughters. After things did not work out with her husband however, she moved to California alone. Mary began to work as a cocktail waitress and thereafter a dancer nicknamed Lucky at a local club. On November 20, 1969, one of Mary's co-workers went to look for her at her apartment after she did not show up for work. Inside was Mary's body. She had been assaulted and then strangled. The furniture were in disarray and a chain on her door was broken. Investigators tried to follow many leads. Occasionally, they filled in her family about their efforts, but the case eventually went cold. Over the years, DNA technology got a lot more advanced. Mary's sister, Rosalie Sands, noticed this. She asked herself, why can DNA technology not help solve her sister's case? Rosalie then contacted a friend 
who was a retired police officer, in 2019. He then contacted people still on the police force. The case was then reopened. The San Diego Police Cold Case Unit took the DNA that was retrieved from the crime scene back in 1969 and used forensic genealogy to identify a suspect. The results of the DNA test led them to 75-year-old John Jeffrey Sipos. John was in the Navy in San Diego when the crime took place in 1969. On October 24, 2020, John was arrested in Schnecksville, Pennsylvania. He is currently being held at a Lehigh County Detention Center. Rosalie said this after learning who took her sister's life. He went on to live his life, and that is the thing that makes me the most upset. When I learned that he's free and happy, it's upsetting to me that he had that normal life all these years. She had so much life ahead of her that just got stolen. This case took 50 years to be solved, making it one of the oldest cold cases to be solved using DNA.